Hi, I'm Keith from Dan Falls Food Retail Controls, and today's video will be on wiring our communications to the system manager. For our communication wires, we want to make sure that we have the correct wire being used in addition to the length of wire. So from the one end to the furthest end, so in other words, where we start and where we end, or vice versa, the total distance of all wire cannot exceed 4,000 foot. The type of wire that we're using is called EIA RS485. That is a type of wire. It is a required wire. If you use anything other than EIA RS485 wire, it will and could very well have problems and would have to be replaced. So the requirement is that you use the right kind of wire and that you stay within the 4,000 foot total length. So our wire will begin inside the system manager on the port that is on the far right hand side, which is our LON RS45 port. Now that is how we are going to communicate with our LON modules, these two communication modules that you see here. Now polarity, even though per LON specification is not a prerequisite, uh, we expect everybody to uh, wire in a polarity sensitive manner. Uh, the best practice is there's almost always a black wire, so always put black on B. That way you can stay consistent the whole way through. As you can see, when we come to the uh, terminal down here, there's three positions, one for the A, one for the B, and then for the shield. So as I have it wired, the white's on the A, the black is on the B, and then the shield is on its own terminal, which is the drain or the, the bare wire that we see. When we come to the first module here, we have the same layout. We have A, white wire, B, black wire, and then the shield. And as we can see, it daisy chains, or the other term we use is point to point. So point to point or daisy chain on through. We again come down here, we honor polarity, which is A, B, and ground. When you look at this terminal here, the wires are stripped back further than they should be, number one. Number two, they didn't get tightened down the whole way. Both of them are problematic to consistent, robust wiring. So you have to make sure your terminals are tight, and you have to make sure that you only allow about three-eighths of an inch of bare wire, so it completely is down in, just as we see here. There is no exposed wire at the terminal. When we get to the last terminal, we are required to put a terminator in. Now the terminator can be a 120 ohm resistor, as we see here. The other option is that we have a switch that's on these modules. There's a little switch that sits right up in here on the COM modules that we can flip on or off that engages or disengages the 120 ohm resistor. When we come over to the LON terminal over here, we as well have a 120 ohm switch that we can engage and disengage. Now the standard when it comes to LON RS45 wiring is that there is a terminator at this end and a terminator at this end. How do I know I'm at the end of my wiring uh, loop? I only have a single wire coming in and I don't have an additional wire going out. We're here, I have one in and out. I'm not at the end of the wiring run. Here I'm at the end of the wiring run, here I am. So this is where we engage the terminator. So we will talk about powering up our, both our system manager and the IO at this point. Uh, for the system manager, the terminal that is on the far left-hand side, as shown in the diagram inside the power, or the uh, keyboard, you can see that the power supply can be 100 to 240 volts. This is an auto switching power supply. It does not require any jumpers to be changed or moved uh, in order to, uh, uh, to power up the unit. So simply by giving the unit 120 volts or 240 volts or 208 volts, uh, it, it will handle the auto switching internally. 
Once you have all of your wiring complete, there is one additional terminal here, which is for the ground. Now, on the power supply, there's not a ground terminal. You're not expected to take the power supply to ground, but the COM module on the power connection, there is a ground terminal that needs to go to earth ground. So every COM module will need a w additional wire that goes and is attached to earth ground. Okay, we will now discuss the shielding requirements for the uh, communication wires. As we've already looked at, the shield has its own terminal, and on that terminal we will make a completed path the whole way back through from the furthest out module, so the end of the line here, to back to the system manager. So we have an end here, we have an end here, we are going to bring the shielding the entire path back. So the two very important aspects to shielding will be that it completes a path the whole way through. Once it's back here to the system manager, we will take the shield to a good solid earth ground. So completed path back at the system manager to earth ground. The terminals that are on each of these modules, that is a shield terminal, floats. It does not have any contact earth ground, so to make connections at these points is perfectly fine. Completed path gets us back to the system manager to earth ground. To learn more about this topic, check out the description. And for more videos like this, visit our YouTube channel, Dan Falls Cool US, and thank you for watching.